Hey guys, um, I actually just came on here today to complain about how hard it was to paint the pergola in the heat and humidity yesterday. Okay, not really, but it was really hard and um, we're still not done. We have a little bit left that we'll do this evening, but yeah, just trying to get that thing done in time for 4th of July. Also, I don't care that I'm drinking out of my snowflake mug today because I wish maybe we had just a little bit of cold in the air. I cannot complain too much, but I mean, I had sweat being like into my eyeballs and it was just not fun. I needed a sweat band. I woke up today and I felt like I maybe needed a whole other round of sleep after that first night. <laughs> but the topic of today's video is actually makeup. We're focusing in on more high-end makeup in this video, just getting you up to speed on some of the things that I have been trying. This is not like first impression status. I mean, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, working with this stuff for a few weeks now in some cases, but I'd still call it all new and thought it might be a good idea to just give you a little round up here in this video. So my skin is all prepped. The first thing that I'm going to be putting on is this Dermablend CC Cream. Um, this is the Continuous Correction. It says it works on coverage, correction, and protection. So it has SPF 50 plus there. Now I really like this stuff. The coverage is absolutely superb. Um, I use I guess like a large pearl sized amount and to me it does remind me a lot of what um, the It Cosmetics CC Cream is doing, except it feels a little bit more like a traditional foundation to me. This is not quite as thick as the CC Cream, and I don't think it really provides as much moisture to the skin as that one does, but as you're gonna see, very satisfying coverage. I'm gonna use my little Profusion buffing brush. This all buffed in. I'm really glad my face didn't get super sunburned. I am like on my back. I really didn't get enough sunscreen back there, but on my face, like I just didn't feel like I could keep the sunscreen on hardly. I was sweating so much and then I go in, dry off, apply more sunscreen, and I guess it really did take. First I used Super Goop and then I used the Baby Aveeno which is my real favorite. I mean, that stuff can look kind of white on the skin if you don't blend it in very well, but I swear you will not burn if you put that stuff on. But see, here we go, we're all blended in. Um, we've got that little bit of a glow. I mean, there's a good amount of moisture that I had on under this. This on its own, I wouldn't call it a particularly glowy product. But yeah, there is kind of a natural skin-like quality to it, yet the coverage is absolutely incredible. Super gorgeous. Um, this tone is perfection for me. What color is it? 35N Light to Medium 1 is the shade that I have. It's glorious. I really love this stuff. But this has been out for a little while now. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments section. If you have any comparisons that you would draw um, to the It Cosmetics CC Cream, I think really for any CC Cream or BB or skin tint kind of product. Certain ones may claim that they can be your moisturizer and your coverage in one, and I think that's just such an individual thing. If your skin is a little more on the dry side, no matter what the claims are on something like this, you could still very much want to have a moisturizer underneath just to really make sure your skin has enough, you know, because odds are this isn't all you're wearing. You're going to put more product on and you're going to really want that moisture. But then again, maybe somebody with very oily skin is like, nope, this is enough. So I'm just curious to hear your take, but I think this is a really, really beautiful product. Then for concealer, in PR, I was sent this little couple of things from NARS. They actually sent several different shades of this new Radiant Creamy Color Corrector. Okay, so we got Peachy Corrector here. This is the light shade option, and then they sent also some Radiant Creamy Concealer. Um, I'm going to be using Light 2 Vanilla. I already had some of this in just a mini size. But I'm going to pop this on and show you what the tone is like. It has a little brush tip applicator and then as you can see, a very peachy tone. And I'm just gonna apply this like where most of my darkness is, like the under eye area, um, any melasma that we've got out there. And it feels like really thin. And so what I noticed myself is that I feel like I get a little more out of it if I just let it sit a bit more on the skin instead of immediately jumping in and blending. So perfect time to have a little sip of coffee. We were so lucky though with the painting um, that it didn't rain because I saw um, somebody who lives 
fairly close to us. Um, I was saw on their Instagram stories, they were showing a downpour of rain yesterday and it was really spotty, hit and miss, but I mean, we, we just needed to get it done and we thought we'll take our chances and we did not get a drop of rain. <laughs> it really, except for one cloud that went by and I was like, ooh, that doesn't look good. Most of the time it was fine, it was really sunny. But I'm gonna start blending this in now. So the rule of application is put it on, tell a not so interesting story about the weather, and then blend. To me, guys, I, and I've used this a decent amount, I don't feel like this is a game-changing peachy corrector. Like, as we know, we're trying to prepare ourselves for not having, you know, that Becca under eye corrector, which just really did it all for me. It brightened, it corrected, it also provided so much nice moisture that played well with darn near any concealer I wanted to put on top of it. Like, it was just really good stuff. And this, I do feel like I come away with a little added brightness to the area. Granted, Dermablend did a lot, but in other cases, especially where I have less coverage on underneath, I'm not completely convinced that this is like the best peachy corrector out there. I do think having a thicker consistency helps, honestly, helps the coverage out. But I am gonna do this. I'm gonna put some more of this on. This is the Skin Tone Radiant Creamy Concealer because this is really designed to be a working hand-in-hand -hand kind of thing here. That's the way they sent it in their PR. I'll do a few dots out here for brightness and then we'll brighten up here. Nose redness. And is it still around? And from what I can tell, the corrector has a little bit thinner consistency than the Radiant Creamy Concealer does. Which Radiant Creamy, I think, is a good product. Um, there was a time when I thought it was too thick, and I think maybe I was just applying too much of it. I do think if you, you know, feel the need to go light with shape tape, you should go light with this one too. But look how much that brightens, especially that shade, you know, being just a little step lighter than my skin. Together, texture-wise, it's working all right with the corrector, probably because this is thinner and they maybe knew that if people were gonna layer these up, we couldn't have two thicknesses of this. But I do think this is bearing the brunt of the coverage. I've used this kind of concealer plenty of times without any kind of corrector underneath, and it really does cover nicely. So I'm not really ooing and aahing too much over the corrector in this situation, although I think it is cool that they came out with that. What we really want is just a drugstore brand to create the exact same thing as the back of one and just crank that stuff out. For loose powder, I have this Tatcha, the Silk Powder, and I've, I've had this on hand for actually quite some time, but I really haven't been talking about it too much in videos. It has this little thing here, and then there was a like a silicone ring that went around this, and I took that off, and now that's gone. But as you can see, the powder shakes out from there. What do we think about this powder? I think it can definitely get the job done and do what you want a powder to do, but I actually want it to be maybe even more brightening. Like the tone is sort of a little bit yellowish tone actually, which as you can see it can work for me just fine and it can mattify. And it can even, you know, by its mattification make the skin look even more perfected. But I'm just failing to see anything super remarkable about this powder. I'm sorry. To me, it's just doing what powders do. It's not looking overly heavy, which is nice, but I'm also not applying too much. The feel of it, you can tell it's very, very fine. It might not even appear that way when it shakes out, but if you feel it between your fingers, you can start to tell, oh my gosh, that's a really finely milled powder, but very, very matte as well. Well, so um, it doesn't really leave much room for glow coming through. I've set the T-zone mostly with this. My cheeks not a whole lot, but the T-zone definitely, and it leaves like no room for shine. So maybe in that element, that's what's making it special, but I'm not really jumping up and down over the uniqueness of this powder. Honestly, I feel like we had the star of the show at the very start of this video. We do have another thing I really like here, this face palette from ABH. The packaging is so cute. I really like like it. It's magnetic closure um, with a mirror inside and it's their Italian Summer face palette. And I love the tones in here. This is so pretty. Um, beware, the bronzer is pigmented. Just tap in. Just roll your brush into it and then blend it out. I have enjoyed this a lot. Um, we're talking matte bronzer, um, a glowy highlight, and then a blush that has maybe a little bit of a satin finish. And these shades are so pretty together. I know there are plenty of like combo blush bronzer highlight things that are out there. However, these exact tones, this really pretty deep bronzer paired with that more delicate pinky blush, 
um, is a little bit unique to my collection anyway. Oh, hair. Hair just said, we want to be part of this look. We want to stick to the face. Maybe you won't notice. Look at the contour you can get here. Like, this is so pretty. I'm just using my e.l.f. complexion brush. I actually took this little compact with me um, during the Miss Illinois competition because I was just looking for something small if I needed to touch up blush or something like that. You know, when you're out and about and then you just look at yourself and you say, I need more blush. I brought this little compact because I loved the mirror that it contained and um, also the other elements, you know, the bronzer. Sometimes you get in like your different lighting types of settings and you realize, oh, I need more bronzer. It was always that way at the TV station, so I was just having deja vu for that. But I really love the color tones in this. Love, love, love it. So we just bronzed up. Um, that bronzer has like a little bit of a reddish undertone in it. It's so pretty. And then we go over here to the blush, which has a little bit of a glow. But primarily the glow is going to come from the highlight with these. And look at that softness, like just that kind of delicately soft pinky quality. I mean, it, it so works with that bronzer. And you could take that blush and you could like pop a little just across the nose or across the forehead and look really like sun-kissed. Oh, that's pretty. Now for the glow and another Profusion brush here that I love. Look at that. I mean, I didn't hold back, but wow. The neat thing about the highlight is that it stays really brightening, even though it does have a little bit of a golden warmth to it. It's still, like, very light. I really do love this. I mean, the textures in it are beautiful. The tones are lovely. I can't pick it apart at all. The packaging is compact and cute. I'm going to pop on a little bit of face mist. The newest high-end thing that I probably have is my Fix Plus. I'll just throw that on. Lovely scent, um, and this really does help the staying power. For the brows, I was recently sent a few things from Makeup Forever. Um, they've got this Aqua Resist line, which includes like a thicker brow pencil, a skinny brow pencil, and also a brow fixer, a little gel type deal. Um, I'm going to use the thicker one today. I use the skinny one, um, and by the way, medium brown. Is that the shade and everything? Yeah. I was going to say, use the skinny one. It worked just fine. Um, the tone was on point. It was easy to use. That being said, were flooded with those. Um, you can easily find a skinny brow pencil in the drugstore. Here we have like a teardrop shaped thicker pencil and I've already worn down, the first time I used it I wore down pretty well the um, sort of smaller end of that shape, but we're just gonna see how it goes. So this shows up as kind of a nice like cool brown, which is perfect. Every now and again I find a brow product I really like, but I look back and I'm like maybe it was just a teensy bit warm, but this is really an appropriate color. It works through the brows quickly. I can't say it's any better than e.l.f. Instant Lift. Although maybe with this Aqua Resist line, I will say they do some incredible um, shadow sticks and eyeliner pencils in this Aqua Resist line. Like they really do have good staying power. So maybe that's the like thing that sets this apart ultimately. Gosh, I was wearing it yesterday. I was sweating my head off, but I forgot to think about what my brows were doing. <laughs> I mean, the sweat was rolling down. I know what you're thinking. Outdoor painting on a hot, humid day? That's a great test for makeup, yeah. But you also go into survival mode. <laughs> I'm gonna stay on that ladder, trying to reach for as many places as I could reach. Trying to not spill the paint or drop the paintbrush. Bub dropped his paintbrush once. So it's creamy. It really does remind me of the texture of e.l.f. Like I wasn't just making that up. Truly what it reminds me of and just the thickness of the pencil. Maybe ultimately it's a little bit thicker pencil than the e.l.f. Instant Lift. But then we have this and look how it's already at a little slant. A little short brush, short bristles. It does hold and it does provide a little bit of a tint. I haven't tried filling in the brows with this and this alone yet, but it certainly does carry some color, like, and it kind of, you know, fluffs them up, does what you want a brow gel to do. It's good stuff. It's just how does it compete with under $10 prices for this very same stuff? 
You know how much I like that new Maybelline. Um, the name is so not catchy. Brow Fast Sculpt. You know, that's, I really love that gel. So this stuff, good. Um, probably does last really well because it's in that same line with the Aqua Resist stuff. But I received it in PR and I don't think I would actually splurge on it myself. Just being honest. Here's the Milani eyeshadow primer, which will just find its way into any video, high-end or drugstore. Ooh, I forgot I have something I need to prep my lips with. Buxom has a super heavy-duty lip plumper here, the Collagen Infused Lip Serum, and it really, it really goes there. But you kind of want to put it on, like, I mean, you could definitely wear it out alone if you wanted to. Uh, I think about putting it on before all my other stuff and kind of letting it sit and do its thing and then put my lip color on top of that. But I think this really does plump and it really does sting. <laughs> also really does smell like thin mint cookies, so there's a benefit. It will bring naturally a little more color to your lips. You might see that as we go through time here. But for eyes, I'm gonna use my Urban Decay Prince palette. Now my sister, Pup, she's a huge Prince fan and she um, was talking to me about these palettes and there's two of them. And in the other palette, she thought she'd identified a shade that might be a dupe for a longtime favorite shade of hers. So she decided to get that palette and then I gave it a little thought and thought, well, maybe I'll just get the other version. So I got this one, but I do want to pop up on screen. Pup did try to dupe that shade, and I guess she came really close, but she did a little layering to make it even more accurate. But I thought that was really cool of Pup to report back to me on this. Um, you know, as she noted, obviously, if you're a big Prince fan, this is a must-have. Like, these palettes may be something you want. The other one is a little bit more cool, more takes on purple in there, and this one has some warmth with a couple of shades of gold, those little different gold tones, some gunmetal type shades, one purpley color in here. And I've been using this palette for a couple of looks, and to me, it's it's a like, not a love. Um, just the color scheme that's in here, you'll see. We'll talk about it. I think the quality is good, but there's a ton of shimmer. You only really are getting two true mattes, this one right up here and this one here. So people who really like a good amount of matte in their palette, and I think I'm kind of one of those people, I really like to be able to layer maybe a few different tones of matte as I'm setting up my look, um, just to get things really blending beautifully. But I'm taking that crease color, the color Love to the Nines, I'm taking that here in my crease. And my lips are feeling really, really tingly, and they're looking more plump and more pink as well. But once that kind of subsides, this product does feel like really good on the lips and kind of balmy. To me, it's not quite the thickness and hint of stickiness, you know, that the Buxom lip glosses have. I mean, it has a little bit of that thickness, but it's just not quite on the same level as that. It, to me, it feels more like a lip treatment. Okay, so we're really just getting that shade in there and getting it blended. I'm using my Profusion ES2. And then I think I'm gonna take some of this purpley shade. It's like a purple with golden shimmer in it. And maybe we take a little bit of that. It kind of comes off matte on the lids, even though, I don't know, maybe the shimmer's just for looks in the palette. But I want to put this over, like, pretty much all the lid. So I was just working with the golds yesterday, and they're nice golds. One has a little more warmth to it than the other. So you see in the color we're getting here? I think the pigmentation of it is nice. But it's too bad that like that interesting golden shimmer within it doesn't really show. Then what? Do we maybe go to Shockadelica right here, the shimmery brown? Get a little bit of that. Maybe use that just to kind of deepen the crease a bit. At this point, I think I'll just grab for a blending brush. Kind of work over my edges a little more and take this Sexy Dancer shade right up here. Again, one of the two mattes and let that kind of uh, just highlight the brow bone. This is what it sounds like when the doves cry. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I think I'm going to take So Dark down here, which is a black that has... I wouldn't call it real like shimmer bits, um, but it's just got more of a satin finish. Um, and I'm going to just add this to my outer corner. Just vamp it up a little because I don't know that I'm going to even do liner with this look. And this might give us that drama. 
Mm. I'm kind of enjoying this murky purple thing. You know, I've thrown the gold into previous looks that I've done, but without that gold touch, I mean, it's, it's still really pretty. So as you can see, I placed that on the outer part of the lid, but I also worked it into the crease just slightly to give myself a little lift. And now I'm blending right over it. For a blackish shade, that blends really easily. Then I'm thinking, let's take this shade here called The Artist. We're looking at sort of a uh, mix of gunmetal and navy, I would say, in that shade. Little sheen, and just going to give ourselves this lower lash line smudge. I'm using my Profusion Small Pointed Brush for this. Overall, pretty minimal fallout with this, hardly any, um, which was at least nice to see considering there was so much shimmer. We had a lot of, I think, potential for fallout, but the shades were pretty easily controlled and blended. I think it's just a matter of, do you like the color scheme that's in here? And for me, it's a like, but not a continual, like, I'm feeling so pulled to this palette. You know what I mean? Doing a high contrast, like black and gold look can be pretty, and you could do some lighter things. Um, we do have this lighter color here that I could maybe do around the inner corner. I'm not saying you don't have options in this, but it's just not my most loved color combo, okay? There's that frosty shade in the inner corner. Really pretty, actually. Really bright. Doesn't take a lot of product to take you where you want to be with that. I'm going to pop on some mascara. Um, you've seen me use it before, I think this Tarte Surfer Curl. I'd taken a little break from it, just doing a lot of uh, working with the Essence Lash Princess mascaras lately. Um, oh, and by the way, the lip color, or the lip plumper has subsided just a little bit. Now it just feels cooling. It does not feel painful. And I wouldn't say the tingle ever like really threw me off to the point that, I mean, I was still able to sit here and talk to you guys. Like I wasn't in, true pain, but it really did tingle there for a period of time, and I think it did plump the lips up. Like, I'm not seeing lines where I usually see lines. You know, it, it just looks fuller. But we're going to use this Surfer Curl today, see how it goes. Ooh, it is building immediately really well. I had this fuzzy here in my hair the whole time. So here we've got this kind of, you know, little bit tapered toward the tip natural bristle brush. It's actually giving me really nice length. Like it's just, it's popping on great right now. And it's, and you know, I got it, I used it, and then I gave it a couple weeks. <laughs> Maybe that's the winning formula. Some people speak really highly of this mascara. I do feel like it's getting on there and it's not, it's not immediately dropping my curl. Camera stopped on me there for a second, but I've got the Surfer Curl on, and I think it's actually looking pretty good. Um, some of the claims on it, by the way, if you're like, what is this supposed to do? It says, delivers a 46% increase in lash curl, lash lifter wand, um, lifts and fans out lashes, sweat proof, flake free, and smudge proof. So I really do like the length. I like how quickly it built, and I've got that on my upper lashes, and then I just put on a little bit of Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions on the lowers. And then I wanted to share this trio I got from QV see these H2O balms, also from the Tarte uh, C line. Three different shades here, as you can see, we have Sandy Toes, and then Salt Life is in the middle. Now that's a shade of lipstick that they make um, that's kind of this cool mauve color. And then we also have another pink called Room Service. I think Room Service is my favorite. I feel like I'm going to want to take a little bit of this moisture off my lips, but that was nice, what that Buxom product gave me. And look at how much color it brought to my lips just naturally and they just seem fuller, I gotta say. So I'm gonna try each one of these on for you, just so you know what they're like. This is Sandy Toes, so this is kind of the nude looking one. And the reason why I chose these to talk about in this video is because I feel like this is just Tarte Lip Surgeons reimagined. Do you remember Lip Surgeons from back in the day? They're jumbo pencils, like they were kind of the pioneer of jumbo pencils, I think Tarte was with those. And they had that kind of minty scent, and these, it's just very, very subtle, but I think it's there. I feel like I can smell just enough of a little subtle mintiness. 
to take me back. But they feel balmy. They don't last a real long time. You wouldn't probably expect that, but that's that kind of nude color. I think it's really pretty. Now, if we're talking drugstore alternatives, I don't feel like I really love any of these more than the Neutrogena ones, you know, the sweatpants of lip colors, moisture smooth color sticks, anyone? Those are like a serious balmy product. These, I think, also are nice to your lips. You know, they feel good. There's Salt Life, so that cool kind of mauve pink. And then lastly, we have Room Surface. To me, that one's more of a classic pink, probably my favorite one in this trio. They feel incredibly comfortable. The shine is not like off the charts on these, as you could probably tell, um, but just they feel like comfy lip balm. I like them. Again, I don't think you have to pay high-end prices to get them, but this happened to be a good deal when I got it. And I was just kind of wondering, I was thinking to myself as I placed the order, like I wonder if this is just lip surgeons making a comeback, and I really think it is. Like it has the very same feel that those used to have, but I would say considerably less scent. Like they were much more heavily scented back then. And here, if I'm getting anything, it's just the teeniest hint, you know? So I'm gonna take my hair down, get your hair down, hair down. And we can recap here. My studs, my stars of the show, I love the Dermablend CC Cream. I think this goes on beautifully I think it covers amazingly well. Um, it's just a beautiful product on the skin, and it's got that SPF 50 in it, too. My other star was this, the ABH uh, Blush Bronzer Highlight in Italian Summer. So pretty. Um, such a beautiful combination of nice quality face colors there. Love that. And then I think my other gem here, I really do like this Buxom Plump Shot. That's what it's called. It's a collagen-infused lip serum. I like that you could put it on kind of at the start of your makeup routine, get it going, and then your lips develop this beautiful um, kind of from within color. Also, more volume. They literally do a little growing in size, and then you can pop on your lip color. It's like, woo! It's not really painful, but you can definitely feel a tingle, and then that subsides and it just feels cooling, which is kind of neat. To me, those are my top three in this video. Everything else, I kind of have the same level of feeling about. Like, they're not duds, but they're just things I feel like I can easily get the look of elsewhere. These kinds of products, those don't have to be from Tarte. As I mentioned, Neutrogena does a good job. Oh, I was kind of feeling the Surfer Curl a little bit more this time around. That's kind of in the middle for me still. I want to use it some more. The brow products from Makeup Forever, good, but I know I can execute a good brow at a drugstore price. And my corrector and concealer from NARS, granted, you know, nice quality stuff. I like that concealer. Again, I don't think that the corrector is like my full-on peachy corrector answer for life right now. I want something in a creamy pot that I think provides more moisture and therefore I think a little more coverage. I've been talking about the Ben Nye stuff that I've been experimenting with and I think that's kind of a good option, but still I've yet to find anything that's quite as good and quite doing every single thing that the Becca is in one product. Prince palette, I think it's cool if you're a Prince fan. Um, I think you're gonna like the quality of what's in here. I've used every shade at this point in different looks and I think that everything applies and blends well. Nice pigmentation. It's just kind of a question of is this a color combo, a color scheme that really just makes you want to grab for this every day. And for me, not so much. It kind of turns out a murky, kind of a bit more grungy look, which I don't dislike that look, but it's just, it's leaving me wanting a little bit more. So thank you guys so very much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.